Hello guys, welcome to my Trimp Tanks. Today we're going to be doing some selective breeding. I was going to say culling, but we no longer cull on this channel. We do selective breeding. Right, so get your shrimp nets ready. Get your glasses on if you're old and decrepit like I am. And something extra. Get that magnifying glass out right? because you're going to need it if you really want to selectively breed like I do. Right, I have uh, three tanks here, Inspector Gadget. We have three tanks here um, that I'm doing today. I've already started the first one, which I'll show you, and it's been hard, hard. We weren't going to use the word cull, but it's the only word I know to, to describe what it is I'm actually doing here. Right? So we have taken out approximately 60 um, zebra pintos from this tank here, blank, blank, black zebra pintos, and uh, we're left with very few in the tank. Right? So you're going to see that coming up. And also, guys, remember and watch out for the special uh, code word that we use at the end of videos to make sure you watch to the end of the video and you'll be rewarded for it. You will be rewarded. I can't even say it. it. Must be my Scottish accent. You will be rewarded. There you go. I managed to do it. Stay tuned, guys. Come right up. Go so we will start time. with this tank. We're going to have a look at it. We're already dripping the ones that we've taken out of this tank already. Let's have a little look. In here, there is... Uh, not so many shrimp left. I've actually really hard called this and um, guys this was my tank. I'll put an image up here because it's going to be very very hard for me to show you images of these shrimp with this camera. right? But this is a camera that I use for uh, most of my good shots. right? So um, I'll put some images up so you can see what these guys look like. Uh, the goal with this tank here is to make our own galaxy shrimp. Uh, from the ones that I've culled this is what we're left with here, so it's not very many, there's probably about 10, 15, 20 shrimp left in this tank, you can just see them and no more. And the cross to get your own galaxy guys was um, uh, blue steels and uh, black zebra pintos, right? And eventually you will get little, little like dots in the cheeks and the head, and to, for it to be classed as a galaxy, right, you need at least two dots or more in the head right and then you want ones starting to go into the body i have uh, in this tank some that are just two dots some that are much more that you can tell are definitely galaxies so these guys will grow up a little bigger than you see here and uh, they will breed and keep on selectively breeding them culling them if you will i need to stop saying that word but this is how much shrimp have actually come out of this tank and it's a fair bit there's probably uh, 40, 50 shrimp in here, if you have to count. And these guys will be going into the top tank. You can see I've already got them drip acclimating in here. And guys, I plan to do this over a long, long time, right? So I, as I said to you before in other videos when I do this, I'm in absolutely no rush to get these shrimp into the top tank, right? So I use a jug like this. Let me show you guys. And I'll simply take out some water without scooping up shrimp like that and I'll put this water back into the tank and I'll keep on dripping it like this for as long as I want it could be five six seven eight hours forever as long as I need it to be right and the reason I'm doing it for so long guys is I just don't want these shrimp to die when they go into the tank above right before I've done it where I put the shrimp straight in and you can see from the tank above here right when you look at it uh, maybe I should have put some food in here to show you guys. But all the ones that are alive are mainly the tangerine tiger crosses that were in here, right? So I'm not seeing any of the red zebra pintos we put in here or the blue bolts, right? So we're going to try adding them this way from now on into this tank and just see if the survivability rate increases. Right, this tank is doing really, really good as well. I want to put more and more shrimp into this tank guys because it's more or less like the shore tank in my room so I need it to be fuller than it is. Right, so we're going to add uh, shrimp from this tank as well. This tank was already hard culled. You can't see anything here just because I haven't put any food in this tank yet but we are going to go with... Um, I'm, I haven't made my mind up yet if it's going to be one stripe or two stripe King Kongs. Anything else that's in here will be selectively bred out of the tank and put in the top tank and that's not where it ends we're going to do this tank today as well i have lots and lots of shrimp in here you can see them all over the glass everywhere this tank is has also been hard culled but it's still not been culled hard enough right so the goal of this tank is to produce a, a darkest blue 
bolt as possible, right? So most of these shrimp have uh, steel genetics in them as well, and you will see the steel genetics because they, they'll have the pure white body, and they'll have like like a hammerite. If any of you guys know what hammerite is, they'll have that type of hammerite effect on the head with the blue. That's what a blue steel is. Uh, but we also have mazuras in here as well. See the mazura crowns as well. So we're going to be taking all of them out today as much as we can. We're going to feed the tanks, these next two tanks as well. I'll keep on going back to this tank every so often and seeing if we need to remove any more. But that is the plan for today, guys. So stick around, get a coffee. I wasn't really sure how I was going to film this video. because it's kind of awkward for me to show you guys the tanks and uh, feed them. Show you the bucket all, etc. all at once with this type of camera, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to feed both the tanks and we're going to do the, the, the tanks one at a time because it'll be easier for me to put you next to them so we can see what we're doing, right? So let's get the food in the tank. Plop. Plop. Like so. Um, we'll probably do this one first just to show you guys. So I, I'll be able to get this camera closer. Um, and then we'll do this one because these these guys might take a little while longer to come to the front because there's less of them in the tank. These guys will be ravenous, right? So what we need is a bucket. I have lots of buckets. It's also good, guys, if you have like a steady supply of buckets. And by the way, guys, if you hear like a rustling noise, it's my beard on the microphone. I have the microphone under my shirt on my on my neck, right? So get yourself a bucket like this. It's easier to do it this way than any other way. Get your siphon, your hose, with your shrimp safe attachment on the end like this. And we are looking guys just to add like enough water in this bucket so that we can uh, put the shrimp in. Quick sack, get the water in. So I'm going to take maybe one, two litres out of this tank. One and a half is fine because we need to top up this tank as well. And then... We'll put it just to the side a little bit because uh, you guys are going to need to get in here to see which side, left or right, we don't know. I'll actually do the other tank as well at the same time because uh, we will need this bucket ready because these guys will eventually come to the front and uh, because there's less of them in here, we need to be on... We need to be... Uh, ready for them when they come to the front because they might only come to the front for a second, right? So same again one one and a half two liters of water in this Let them come to the front and Then we can start right so we have our net Nice shrimp net. I like the soft ones. I have noticed I've used uh, some nets some people send me and they're like hard in the back I don't like that. It's, it's um, when you're going into a crowd of shrimp like this here I don't like if the, if the net is too hard because I, I think you might squash the shrimp right so it's good if it's a little bit soft and then you must get into what you're doing right so let's start off on this side guys as well I will show you macro footage of this too because it's very very hard for you guys to see right so the goal with this is to uh, leave in the tank the ones that have all blue bodies and we're going to remove anything that is uh, half white and or has a black head on it. Is that simple enough? Let's get going. Right, so there's a lot of shrimp in this tank. So it's going to be pretty easy for us to do this in the beginning. Just get straight in. Anything that has um, any white in it, we don't want in here. And uh, because there's so many shrimp in here, we could probably do four or five at a time. Right, so there's four into the bucket below and when you use um, a litre and a half to two litres of water and you use bigger buckets like this guys when you use bigger buckets like this it's much easier for you to put the shrimp in makes sense hopefully you guys can see something here I'll try and get the camera a wee bit closer and again it's very very easy for me to see which uh, shrimp need to come at this tank just because they're, they're, there's quite a difference in the ones with the white tails can, compared to the ones with the, that are blue, right? So we're heading for an all blue tank, deep blue, blue bolt tank, anything as I said before that has a white on the body or has a dark head is coming out. 
And guys, this can take quite a while to do. So you must be prepared for that when you do this. Don't just think you're going to come along and, and uh, start culling in five minutes and, and do your tank rate. I, mine's is just as bad as it is because I've been a little bit lazy. Like, this is a good example. This one's body is white. And its head is blue. And this is um, a good uh, time to tell you about uh, the issues of a shrimp keeper as well, right? So we never ever have enough tanks. And this is a great example of this. There's nothing wrong with these shrimp. This is a blue steel here, white body, blue steel hammer right head, as I said. Uh, the only other way I can explain this, guys, is maybe like a measle effect on the head. Measles, the little dots. And these on their own, you could put in their own tank and sell them, do whatever you like with them. But because I'm limited to space, this one's quite nice as well, but you're coming out, because I'm quite limited with space, I have to do it like this. Goals, guys, you've got to set yourself goals. Right, the only type of shrimp in here that I probably wouldn't remove is uh, a buried female. Let's get these three or two into a wee tub. And while we're here, guys, we should uh, also remember to look at these ones here because, as I said, I'm looking for uh, Red King Kongs. Right, so Red King Kongs are ruby reds, that's what they're called. When it's a red one, it's called a ruby red. When it's a black one, it's called a King Kong. Right, so I'm looking for uh, the young here, the ones that are uh, King Kongs. Anything that's not a King Kong needs to come out of the tank, right? And, because this last breeding that happened in here was quite decent, we got a decent number of um, we got a decent number of uh, red king kongs from it. We can afford to take out any of the adults that are not very good-looking king kongs. Right, and here's a good example. There's two very very small shrimp here. I can get them out. There's a little shrimp here. Wherever he went, oh, he got out of the net. I see there's two of them here, actually. Two of them. Three of them, three in this little corner here. They're very small. Maybe maybe a wee bit too small. Yeah, let's not get greedy. I'll try and do one at a time. You guys can't see this. Oh, there is two in the net, actually. These are tiny Missouri crowns. One of them has the Hinamura mark on the back as well, right? So them on their own are worth decent amounts of money. Right, so if you have another tank, selectively breed your shrimp into your other tank. This is a good opportunity to take red. Right? So I'm only doing uh, the Red King Kongs, right? And I have a tiny bit of a dilemma here because you, you get two different variations of the King Kong. You get the one stripe or the two stripe King Kong. And we talked about this before with our goal being um, a goal being a ruby red extreme, which is an all red shrimp. I tell you what, they're so fast when they're small. On all red shrimp, right, and to get that, you just need to selectively breed like I'm doing here. But you have to remove anything that has white on it. Right, so we can't get a ruby red extreme with white shrimp. It just, you just never will be able to breed it, breed it out like that, right? So you got a little Missouri crown again. Some of these guys are teeny, teeny little things. But as long as you drip acclimate them, you're fine, right? And just be careful with your nets, guys. This is a good reason why I like the softer net as well. Because when you turn them inside out and stuff like that, it doesn't kill the shrimp, it doesn't crush them, it doesn't hurt their legs. Right, so let's go. There are so many none. This is a Missouri crown again. That's a white shrimp with a red head. Missouri crown into the bucket. I'll show you all these guys uh, when we're done as well. Alright guys, before um, we get on to the next part, I thought I'd just show you this bit with the drip acclimator in case you guys have never seen this before. You will have seen it, but some people will never have, never have seen it, right? So we're going to go from the top tank to these buckets away down there, right? So measure your distance. You want at least this much overhang into the tank and you want the same again on the end that goes into your bucket or container, right? So I've already pre-measured this one. Stick on an air stone like this, this does two things, it gives a little bit of weight to the 
tube so it flops into the tank like this because you don't want to be drip acclimating and then this to come out the water. Right, and then on the other end, or way down here, you want to put in a little air valve like so. Right, and then you want to put in your bucket. And I'm going to do these guys while I'm still uh, selectively breeding because the, the drip process will take hours. Right, so it's going to make no difference if I start dripping these shrimp uh, while we do this. Right, so get your stuff together like this into the tank. Maybe mine is a wee bit, a wee bit too long, tiny bit, but no more because I can use these for uh, my bigger rack up behind me as well. Right? I like to use a teeny bit of tape just to hold it in place because when I'm dripping, guys, are we down here? Um, I like the water to splash because there's a little bit of aeration when it splashes, right? So get your end that is open like so, sucking it. Right, and it will create a siphon. You see it's starting to drip already away down here. And I'm only looking for uh, two, three drips a second. I just leave it in the bucket, like so. Shall we do another one, because I'm here? Let's get our silicon air tubing. I buy this in uh, either 30 meter lengths or 100 meters, whichever is available at the time. Right, so for this distance, it's not even two meters. Right, so let's get our Air stone, again as we just said, because we'll do it properly this time, we'll measure it up. Put it in the tank, uh, put your little bit of tape on. Like so. And then we're roughly going to eyeball where the little valve is to go in to the container, right? So we want it to go in just more or less like two centimeters or something like that, an inch, two and a half centimeters, an inch in. That's what she said. And then your little air valve here that we use to regulate the water flow. Right, so let's get this one started as well. Into the container. Into the container, come on. Oh, my air stone isn't in the water, dumbass. Dumbass move. Damascus. and into the container. Try and not swallow the water while you're doing this. I don't know why that is uh, such a difference in length there because we did measure it. Get in there. Right, so there you have it, right? Next thing we're gonna do is, is guys, it's always worth doing this as well, is uh, having a floor towel. Just put it under your feet. Especially if you have a tiled floor, just wipe the floor, right? Don't wipe the floor with your sock because you will get athlete's foot, trust me. I've been doing this enough for years to know that you will get athlete's foot if you do this. Lemisole one touch is awesome for that, by the way, if you get it. Because I still do get it sometimes with having a tiled floor and dropping water and then standing in it, right? So there's our drip acclimators going in here. We'll continue the cull and we'll be right back. Uh, let me quickly show you what we're left with here. I'm gonna take uh, some macro footage, and by no means, guys, is this us finished here. This is just what I've done today because uh, there will be more shrimp in the tank that have not come to the front. Right, so let's have a little look at some of these shrimp. I'll take some macro footage for you guys so you can see. Let's get this focused, because this will show you more than uh, me trying to explain stuff. Right, so here you can see these uh, blue bolt steel crosses have a lot of blue in them now right? and before most of them were whitish in the tail. Right, so that is what we're looking for. Try to remove any of the ones that have the Missouri crown trait in it as well. I will continuously uh, see these in this tank as well probably forever because I didn't cull it hard from the start. Right? So there is that one looking good some of them are near the finished article like that one's almost perfect this one's almost perfect as well right so we're getting there this one probably should be removed you see the difference in the two one is uh, quite blue another one has white in it so that one will be better if we removed it let's have a look at the next tank 
This tank is harder to see because uh, we'd already started doing this tank six months back. But you can see here what I'm talking about with the Red King Kongs. The two white stripe Red King Kong there, two stripe Red King Kong there, a one stripe Red King Kong, two stripe Red King Kong. What is that one? There's that one stripe Red King Kong. One's at the back, one stripe Red King Kong, two stripe Red King Kong, one stripe Red King Kong. Two straight break King Kong, right? So there's nothing in here that isn't a King Kong now. I've actually removed some of the adults as well that I wasn't really happy about being here in the first place, right? So all these guys here will all grow up into nice beautiful shrimp and uh, they will multiply. And then we'll get more shrimp like this. Let's have a look at the galaxies that have been culled today as well. These guys were um, culled way way earlier than what you saw as well right so a lot of them are not actually here but for this in particular as I said we're looking for stuff that has uh, dots on the face probably not going to get a very good picture of this right but this is what we're looking for dots on the face this one is like very barely a galaxy in fact I probably wouldn't call it a galaxy that one Let's see is there any ones here let me quickly just turn the camera off see if i can spot one with my bare eyes that you guys will be able to tell no i can't now let's have a little look in this uh container down here these are the ones that have come out of the tank i've just shown you again there's probably 30 40 shrimp in here so these are ones that are uh, show no signs of having galaxy genetics right so these are black zebra pintos Black Nanishi, you want to call them that. Let's go over to the red bucket here. And again, guys, uh, not so many adults in here, but you can see a lot of the babies swimming around. Lots of Missouri crowns. Again, guys, as I said before, um, I would love to have more tank space because these are really shrimp that you should uh, be breeding out for Mizzou more Missouri crowns, more red pandas, etc. But I just don't have the space. Okay, let's get over to what we've been doing with our blue colony. Plenty of shrimp in here as well. You can, you can probably make out that a lot of these are have uh, white tails. Most of these will be your generic uh, blue steels, which I think are quite nice as well. Again, we just don't have the tank space. Let's go up here and see if... Uh, let's go focus on something. You can see they're like right dead center. That should be removed. Anything else? But you can see in general, guys, this tank is bluer. This is what the goal I'm after with this tank is blue, blue, blue. Because uh, blue on, on any kind of dark substrate against any kind of green looks amazing. You know what I think? Doesn't it look amazing? Right, so the next thing, guys, you will see is um, us putting these fellas into the tank above. right? And that will be in a few hours, I think. I'm not going to rush these guys, as I said. Okay, one momentos. Okay guys, these shrimp have been drip acclimating for hours and hours and hours, probably three hours if I had to guess correctly. And they're all in this net, and I thought we'd share the moment when we put them all into the tank, because there's lots of them. What we'll also do guys is, um, once I've done this, I'll feed the tank, and when you're putting this many shrimp into a tank, I'd suggest you do that, you feed the tank because uh, the other shrimp in the tank might harass them to death, literally, right? So. We'll see some macro footage and also guys before we go um, I want you guys to see the, the code word for today is going to be I love selective breathing. I love selective breathing it's that easy. Let's get these guys in because they've been in the net for a little while. Moment of truth. What are they like? Lots of them. There was a, at least a couple of hundred shrimp taken from these little tanks underneath. Lots and lots of them. <laughs> Oh, I love it when I see shrimp like this. Look how many there is. There wasn't so many red ones. There was about maybe a hundred blue steel types. Maybe the same again for the, the other ones. They're still coming off the net. The bigger adults never want to leave the net. They want to stay on there. And uh, as I said, we'll show you guys some macro footage. God, they're all over the net. Oh my God, they're all in the back as well. I didn't see that there. Let's see, come on, get off my net. Get off. Come on, you little mother fudgers. How many is there on here? 
Let's see. Oh, there's still more. You don't want to leave. So guys, I want you to please consider leaving a big, big like for today's video because uh, I've been in the shrimp room for hours <laughs> today making this video, right? So please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Enjoy the rest of the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Happy shrimp, you guys. Bye -bye.